When you look up the word spice, what do you find on any social media platform? Whether it's YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, or even LinkedIn, what you'll find is that the videos that do well tend to just glorify the pleasure of watching people in pain. These are the hottest chilies in the world. But my goal today was to find out how the rest of the world utilizes spice, not just for pain, but actually for pleasure. Welcome to the very first episode of Trust the Chef. The show where we take everyday culinary concepts and challenge professional chefs from all over the world to make a dish that celebrates them and their love for food. Today, we'll trust our chefs with the culinary concept of spice. The reality is spice is so much more than just a sensation of spiciness. It's also taste, it's flavor, it's aroma. It's everything that makes food pop. So I went on a bit of an adventure to find people that knew how to use spice. Whether they came from India, Cambodia, or Thailand, I believe that spice could be utilized in great ways more than just for that pain sensation. And please don't get me wrong, I love the challenge of testing the human condition, pushing boundaries, and really gritting your teeth when you're eating that bowl of really spicy curry. Please cue 2018 Justin at Coco Curry in Tokyo Japan. Now, the first chapter in our spice adventure led us to Phillipstown, where I went and met Venu, who is the head chef and owner of Dosa Kitchen. A humble team of three that pumps out about 800 dosas every single week. But we weren't here for dosas today, we were here for curry. And so I wanted to ask him to debunk the myth that curry has to be spicy. The very popular and unforgettable flavors of butter chicken, and something slightly different, Palak Paneer. Hey, my name is Venu. Uh, I'm the owner of Dosa Kitchen. So today we're gonna learn uh, how to make butter chicken. So we add some um, a cashew paste and house-made um, butter sauce. Nicely tandoori smoked a chicken, marinated overnight. Add some um, kasuri methi. So add some um, a cream. So the people love the butter chicken. It's um, it's nice and creamy butter chicken, just right from the pot. So this one, it's really nice and creamy. It's not super spicy, but it's a, it's a, it has a, a nice uh, spice into it. So we serve into this bowl. Uh, especially the palak paneer is um, a vegetarian vegetarian dish and you have a spinach and you have a cottage cheese it's a favorite dish for most of the indians and personally i love palak paneer so we just add um, some garlic to it so onion base onion masala yeah that's the onion masala and that's the onion sauce that's the cashew cream and we're adding paneer cubes, which is cottage cheese. So this is the house-made paneer. So we make this paneer from scratch, and we make uh, this paneer like a, a very regularly. The palak sauce made from fresh palak, uh, fresh spinach sauce. That gives nice color to it, natural color to the uh, palak paneer. The palak paneer is uh, popular as butter chicken. There's a uh, fresh cream. Gives that neat creamy uh, texture and flavor to that. So I'm trying the the palak paneer. This is the best palak paneer I ever tried. Now that you've watched Venu make these curries, I hope you can appreciate the fact that spice was not inherently a way of just killing our taste buds. It was actually a way to enhance and elevate the dishes underlying tone. So now that we've established something as ubiquitous as curry doesn't always have to be spicy, this led me to challenge the second notion of today. That spice doesn't always have to come in the form of chili or a powder. It's so much more than that. And so we headed southeast of India to a small place called, actually not that small, it's got 16.72 million people residing in it right now, Cambodia. Now when you think about Cambodian food, you probably just think about maybe chicken noodle soup or spring rolls 
But when I met Rom, who is the owner of Kama Angkor, based at Entex on Columbus Street, my eyes were so opened to the exciting prospects of what Cambodian food actually meant. And so when I asked her about what spice meant to her, she instantly went straight to ginger chicken. Or actually, ginger stir fried chicken. Stir fried ginger chicken. So we're gonna start off with a pot, heated pan with a bit of oil. What we're wanting here is to sear off that chicken first. Right, at this stage as you can see it's just starting to kind of brown, it's starting to sear. What you want to do is you want to add the sugar. And at this time here I like to add a little bit of the pepper. So as you're putting it into there it's kind of roasting all those ingredients. We want to chuck in our ginger to go into now. I wish you can smell the ginger now that it's just being slowly roasted into that dish and you can just smell the aroma of that ginger. And as soon as I add that fish sauce, straight away you can see the colour change. As you can see, it's a straightforward ginger stir fry chicken with spring onion. We'll have a wee taste test. Golden food with golden calorie, guys. You can taste the ginger, you can taste the caramelisation of that sugar in there, but it's not too much. You can taste the fish sauce, you can taste the garlic, the pepper. This dish is probably so popular because all these flavours are actually roaming in your mouth. And as you're having that one bite, it's like a flavour explosion into your mouth. I think that this is actually really amazing. Um, why it's not only good to taste, but it's good for your body as well. To put simply, ginger chicken was delicious. Along with other flavours such as fish sauce, soy sauce and even a bit of sugar and MSG, this dish really showed me that spice could actually develop flavour to the point of sweetness. This sort of reminded me of caramelising bell peppers or capsicums. They're basically giant chilies that have no spice to them. The more you let the flavours percolate in the pan, the deeper and more sweet those caramelised flavours can get, which is amazing. Okay, so we've talked about how curries don't have to always be spicy. We've talked about how spice doesn't always have to look like a chili or a red, long, skinny looking thing. The final destination in our spice adventure is northwest of Cambodia, which is Thailand. And for this part of my investigation, I went to Pom's Thai kitchen. The most wholesome couple you ever meet, Pom and Joe, create some incredible Thai food for people in Christchurch to try. However, there was one thing that wasn't on their menu, and this really excited me. So, hello, I'm Pom from Pom Thai Kitchen. Today I'm gonna make a lap mu spicy salad with uh, some Thai herbs and some fresh herbs. Today not like a, a cooking class, but just show you how to make it. For the means to make a spicy salad, depends on how you like. You like fatty or just the lean one, but I can recommend you, you just use mix. Put some fat and some lean. Just put very really little bit like a stir fry, but not put oil, just put water. And for some lamb leaf, we just slice very really thin. Wanna be a chef because I wanna go overseas to find a job, something like that. Then become chef. <laughs> and this one I just tear some to make more fragrance. Make sure it's cooked and then enough. We can seasoning with fish sauce, lamb juice or lemon juice. I use Thai chili flakes because more spicy. This one, uh, roasted rice, sticky rice. You need to cook it with uh, galangko, lemongrass and kapha lamb leaf. Roasted and then bread it. We put uh, roasted sticky rice quite a lot. We want to make a uh, your salad quite dry and nice taste. So today chili, I will put quite a little bit, a lot. <laughs> I like spicy. And also love sour. A little bit sugar. And stir. We need to seasoning first and then let, to, let you try, let you taste. I like more sour. And when you add more sour, you need to make con the taste contrast with 
more salty. Right. And then, put our herbs, spice. Okay, now it's done. Just stir. And ready to serve. If you don't like too much onion, you can put less. But if you love, it's very nice. Done. The words salad and spice aren't normally associated with one another. Instead, they're seen as oxymorons or things that are completely separate on the spectrum of food. But Pom showed me that even a salad could benefit from a little spice. Another aspect that I really appreciated when Pom started creating this dish was the fact that instead of using a chili sauce that just overpowered every other flavor, it acted as just one of four components, which is really important in Thai cooking. Sour, salty, sweet, and spice. All four components need to work well together to make the dish taste delicious. So let's go back to the goal that we set ourselves at the beginning of this video. To show how the world utilizes spice, not from a place of pain, but a place of pure pleasure. And so where have we gone? We've learned that in Indian cuisine, curries don't inherently need to be spicy. In Cambodia, we've learned that spice doesn't always have to look like a chili. And number three, we've learned that spice can be a team player all the way in Thailand as it builds on the flavor between salty, spicy, sweet, and sour. If you enjoyed watching today's episode and feel like I missed something out, maybe a place in your part of the world that utilizes spice a bit differently, please let me know in the comments below because that's what we're all about, sharing our love for people and food one bite at a time. And finally, if you enjoyed watching this episode of Trust the Chef, please consider subscribing to stay tuned for future episodes. My name is Justin, and you're watching Story Bites.